Welcome to Married at First Sight season 15 episode 15 and my name is Deborah and I am doing a recap review and this is going to be a for Nate and Stasha. I do separate videos on all the couples and at the end of this video you can click on the link above and you can uh, watch my other reviews on the couples. Thank you so much if you're first time here. Don't forget to drop down in the comments, introduce yourself. I love to uh, chat with you. And if you come here every week or been here before, thank you for coming back. I really do appreciate y'all. But definitely help me out and uh, like this video, uh, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And thank you to all my VIP members that have been joining. And thank you for my new subscribers. I really do appreciate y'all. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into this chat about uh, Nate and Stasha. And um, Nate's little tra mama trauma, his mama trauma is starting to come through. I'm like, um, I'm st I call this episode, uh, Are You My Mama? Because Nate is looking to make sure uh, that Stasha is not his mama. Nate wants to make sure that Stasha um, absolutely understands what it will take to raise a baby. And he's like, uh, are you going to be like my mama that abandoned the whole baby because you wasn't really ready for a baby and you don't understand what it takes uh, to be a mother or what it's going to take uh, to raise a child? And it's kind of crazy because I was agreeing with Nate the whole episode, y'all. I mean, I was agreeing with him the entire episode. I really do like Nate and I like the way that Nate expresses himself. And let me tell you, a lot of times he was making Astasha look foolish because the points that he was bringing up, I thought were really good points. Um, some of it's because of his trauma with his mother. I get it. It was fear, but at least he was expressing it. At least he was talking about it. But what tripped me up about Stasha was she was trying to act like it was of no concern at all. <laughs> I was like, girl, why you act like this? Come, this is coming out of left field. Nate was bringing up some really good points. You know, unlike a lot of the other couples, Nate said we had a good weekend. This little weekend getaway was fun. It was an amazing time. Everybody else may not have had a, as good a time, well, specifically Lindy and Miguel. But Nate said they had an amazing time. And so now um, Nate's going to get to go see this new house he's going to be living in. <laughs> so Nate says, I'm excited to go see this house we're going to be moving into. Stasha is excited to show it to him. But she says she's feeling anxious and she gets into this new house. And everything is white. Everything is all pristine and clean. And she starts talking about her rules and regulations as if uh, Nate is a, um, a boarder in the house. <laughs> like she's going to list down the house rules and, the, and like he's a boarder or a renter in from her. Girl. Uh, Stasha, I don't know. Her expectations, I think, are out of line. You can't expect to move somebody in your house and be trying to control their every aspect as if he is a guest in the house. Yeah, maybe your house, you might have paid for it, but you can't be treating your husband like he's a guest in the house and all your rules are the rules that he has to abide by. Nate was, Nate was looking at her through the sidelines saying, uh, she ain't ready. <laughs> Nate was like, uh, she ain't ready, but she gonna have to get ready. Even when they were talking about the backyard and Nate was like, we can put some grass back here. She's like, I don't want no grass. I want concrete so there's no maintenance. He was like, first of all, you got a man now. I can take care of the grass. This ain't nothing but a little uh, a four by five piece of grass. He's like, shoot, I could probably cut this grass with a pair of scissors. <laughs> He's like, we can have some grass back here. That's not a lot of maintenance. Sasha's so used to being independent and doing everything on her own. She doesn't even consider that, oh, I got a man now. You're right. He could cut the grass. You can have some grass in the backyard, Stasha. Everything ain't got to be concrete, so you ain't got no maintenance. Stasha was not, not only do you got to take your shoes off when you come into the house with this white carpet, uh, you got to take your, you got to keep your socks on so that the oil from your feet don't get in the carpet too. Girl, I, these are some rules, rules. I'd be like, oh my goodness, this is the way I got to live. I can't never walk barefoot in my own house. This is a lot, Stasha. This is a lot. But when they start talking to her saying, you know, hey, this house ain't really baby friendly. You talk about you want a baby, but you got white pillows, 
white carpet, light colored couch, white walls. He's like, uh, what happens when the baby starts spilling stuff and touch your white pillows or draw on your wall? And um, Sasha's like, oh no, my kids aren't going to be that. My kids going to be good kids, girl. <laughs> Sasha ain't never even kept no kids. She ain't read no books, seen no movies, nothing. She hasn't seen the fact that you can't guarantee no kids not going to spill nothing on your couch, right on your furniture, uh, right on your walls. Uh, this girl is out of touch with reality. And Nate's trying to help her out. Nate is really trying to help her out. But Sasha ain't trying to hear it. Sasha thinks she can control every situation. And she thinks she's going to be able to control them kids so them kids uh, don't never mess up her nice new house. She in for a rude awakening. You know, in the last episode, I was telling people, um, you know, hey, having pets and bringing two pets together, you know, it creates an additional obstacle in a relationship because, uh, you know, pets are like kids. But let me tell you what else. Having to make such big decisions so early in a relationship. And this idea of this house, decorating the new house, what to put in the new house, I'm telling you, that's also going to, those are big decisions. They may seem like small, but when you're first getting to know each other, the decisions on what type of couch to wear, colors, uh, not couch to wear, couch to buy, color scheme. All those are small decision points that I'm telling you, couples can get in big fights over that kind of stuff. So although it's nice that they have this brand new house to move into, deciding what to put in it, even down to these little cabinet handles, um, it's going to be some pushing and pulling. They're going to have to negotiate and Sasha thinks she's going to get her way all the time. But I think Nate is going to be able to hold his ground on some things. He's like, hey, I'm not going to move into no house. And it says, it screams all of Stasha. I don't care if she paid for it herself or whatever. She didn't pay no cash. So I'm quite sure that Nate is going to be um, giving Stasha some money every single month that she's going to be using to go towards that mortgage. He ain't going to be living there a rent free, money free. So that means he's going to be able to get a, a few say so's up in there of a few of the little decorating items. Stasha said he could have the garage. He could do whatever he wants. <laughs> in the garage but she said in the house uh she wants to have all the final decision making one thing about state of nasha wherever they go they hold hands if they go hiking they hold hands if they're walking up to the house they hold hands that's one thing i do like about these two they have a lot of public displays displays of affection pda you always see nate reaching for a hand or holding her hand even this little hike they're going on is more like a stroll because um I don't know. You can't really hike, hike when you hold hands. You need your arms to be moving. But you know what? That's one thing that I like about this couple. They are always uh, holding hands and showing a lot of uh, displays of affection. Um, and I, I really like that. I enjoy that about the two of them. But when they're on this hike and they're making their little guacamole and everything, guacamole and chips, you know, Sasha's talking about, um, yeah, I want to have a baby, but what, I also want to have a lot of fun. And they should, Nate is talking about, um, how does fun and a one-year-old go together? <laughs> I'm with you, Nate. He's like, listen, when you have a baby, you learn, you're pretty much almost on lockdown for the first couple of years. Uh, where are you going to go with a, a one-year-old? How far, how long is your plane ride going to be? I know people do it, uh, but you do it and you bother everybody else on that doggone plane. You do it because uh, and you don't mind bothering everybody else. I can't stand when people be said, you know what? Did you really have to travel with your baby? You couldn't stay home for one year to give your baby a little bit of chance to grow up. We all got to hear your baby cry uh, for five hours on the plane. And Nate is saying, you know what? If we're going to be parents, he said, if I had a baby, I would just be on lockdown. And what he doesn't like what he's hearing from Stasha is he's hearing Stasha talk about as if the baby's not going to be no trouble. Like the baby's just going to be like an accessory. And he's saying, is she really prepared for a child? And is she going to be like my mama and abandon me? Because she started talking about um, how his mother was only 23 and his father was 36. So really he's describing a woman that he said wasn't prepared to be a mother. And I don't think he thinks Sasha would give up his child, but I think what he's looking at is saying, she doesn't even um, recognize some things that are gonna happen and that's scaring him because she's not coming into the conversation about having a baby with a level head. Her expectations of what life would be like with a young baby, I, it's really unrealistic. It really is unrealistic. He said, how are we going to be running around having a whole lot of time when a, ba when a baby is completely dependent on you? And he said, um, what kind of fun are you going to be trying to have? <laughs> he says, uh, fun at home. We're going to be having that fun at home, changing diapers and cleaning up spills. 
Uh, that's what we're going to be doing. But, you know, even in his expressing his fear, or his concern, he wasn't saying he didn't want to do it. I never heard Nate say he didn't want to have a baby. He actually never said that. He said, but he did want her to acknowledge that this idea of that we're going to be having all this fun at the same time of having a baby, uh, you're not going to be able to do both. It's the same conversation that um, Elijah Wan and Katina had last year when they when she was talking about she wanted to have a baby, talking about she was going to go to work, finish school, and have a baby. I'm like, girl, you can't do all that. And we see um, after they came back on, she put that baby on hold. Now, Alexis, I'm not Alexis, we now announce Astasha. She really can't put the baby on hold because, you know, she's quite a bit older. Um, so, but this idea that she's going to be gallivanting around the world, traveling uh, with a one-year-old girl, you better put them vacations on hold. But, you know, he also brings up a good point about, you know, hey, what happens if we get in an argument, you know, just like Lindy and Miguel, are you going to put me out? And, um, you know, Sasha's eyes get all big. Tell me, no, I wouldn't do that. Girl, we are, everybody know that if Nate started acting like a fool, um, Stasha would absolutely put him out. She can say no all she wants, but the fact of the matter is uh, she would absolutely do that. And so what he's saying is uh, he could be homeless. He could be out on the street with no place to live with, with a quick snap. And I don't think that means he isn't going to move in her home. I think he wants to move in the home. But I think what he wants her to realize is the sacrifice he's making. It's really just like what Justin was saying to Alexis. And what he's saying is, I don't mind making this sacrifice for you. Justin didn't mind giving up Maya. And um, also Nate doesn't mind going out on the ledge, going out on the limb, moving in the house with Stasha, knowing that if it went bad, he'd be homeless. But what both of them want these women to do is to acknowledge the sacrifice. Don't just look at it as nothing. If I'm going to make this big move, this big sacrifice, put myself at such a vulnerable level, I at least want you to acknowledge it and I want you to consider it an act of love because what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing myself, my safety, my comfort to make you happy. And that is a form of love. And what both of these men are asking for is acknowledgement because, you know, in the past episodes, um, Sasha tried to act like moving in with her was no big deal. She tried to act like uh, you're the one coming up because you moving into a brand new house. Uh uh. No, 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 Stasha. That is a big dot deal. That is a big sacrifice. And that's what Nate wanted Stasha to acknowledge. But Nate just wants to make sure that Stasha has a real grip, a real grip on reality. Because what he doesn't want to happen is he doesn't want some baby to come along and she's all out of source and out of wits because what she expected is not going to be the truth. He was trying to deliver some truth to her. He was trying to get her to see things realistically to make sure she was really ready for the realness of having a baby and not this little fantasy and pie in the sky uh, type thing, which she's imagining it. And I think that's the part that was making him uncomfortable because I think what he was saying was she doesn't even know what's, what's about to happen. And so he's afraid of what her reaction will be when reality hits. I think he wants to make sure she knows what's going to happen. But do I think a Nate doesn't want the baby? Actually, I don't think so. I don't, I think Nate doesn't mind having the baby. I really don't. I, but I think he wants to make sure that Stasha is prepared to have one. You know, last week I was talking about Stasha trying to get a baby with all this freakiness. And then she started talking about when she was working out with Alexis, talking about um, she had gained some weight. Uh oh, Stasha, don't let us know you're pregnant already. Uh, Stasha says she felt like she had already gained some weight. I don't know how far long are we now. Are we seven weeks? Seven weeks into this? Uh, she couldn't be too far along if she was really pregnant. She would have had to got pregnant on the honeymoon. So she really, only, at the most, she could only be four weeks. So I'm not quite sure. I don't think she'd be showing this quick, even if she was pregnant. Uh, but she said she gained, she put on a little, a few happy pounds. <laughs> but like I said on the other videos, there wasn't much that went on this weekend. Not much at all. Not much for me to get riled up or talked about. Um, I still feel good. I still feel good about these two. I was happy to see them working through some issues. And I was happy to see uh, that Nate, I'm going to start calling him the great communicator. <laughs> he was communicating really well with Stasha and making her think about some real good stuff. But that's it, y'all. Let me know what you think about the episode. Drop down in the comments. Talk to you later. Bye.